Hi, welcome to my channel and podcast. Thank you guys. If you're still here with me, thank you for sticking with me uh, while we march into wisdom. Today we'll be, we will be reading Proverbs 29. And Proverbs 29 is another one of those chapters where it doesn't give a theme, but it has several different topics woven throughout. But the good thing about Proverbs is that even though there's a lot of chapters where it just has a hodgepodge of different topics woven throughout, you can actually go through the book and extract a certain topic and get so much content from it. You get so much of a study if you just go in and just study, you know, just say the wicked. Or just say um, money, how to handle money, or how to treat your parents. You could just go through and just go through all the verses and just pull those things out. And you could have a very, very, very good study. And um, I think, I don't know why the Lord done, you know, inspired this book to be written like this. But to me, for me, I would say it makes me read it constantly because... It's not so easily um, written. It's not, you know, all of the uh, chapters aren't topic by topic. So you kind of have to search, you know, each chapter to uh, do your own study or just glean, you know, the different things from each chapter. And you have to read it in its entirety to bring everything together. Of course, I could just extract, you know, everything on Wicked, everything on how to pull, you know, um, how to treat the poor, stuff like that. But I just rather read the whole thing so that I don't leave anything out. So with that being said, let's continue to march into wisdom by reading Proverbs 29 NLT. And it reads, whoever stubbornly refused to accept criticism will suddenly be destroyed beyond recovery. When the godly are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked are in power, they groan. The man who loves wisdom brings joy to his father, but if he hangs around with prostitutes, his wealth is wasted. A just king gives stability to his nation, but one who demands bribes destroys it. To flatter friends, is to lay a trap for their feet. Evil people are trapped by sin, but the righteous escape, shouting for joy. The godly care about the righteous of the poor. The wicked don't care at all. Mockers can get a whole town agi agitated, but the wise will calm anger. If a wise person take a fool to court, there will be ranting and ridicule, but no satisfaction. The bloodthirsty hate blameless people, but the upright seek to help them. Fools vent their anger, but the wise quietly hold it back. If a ruler pays attention to liars, all his advisors will be wicked. The poor and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives sight to the eyes of both. If a king judges the poor fairly, his throne will last forever. To discipline a child produces wisdom, but a mother is disgraced by an undisciplined child. When the wicked are in authority, sin flourishes, but the godly will live to see their downfall. Discipline your children and they will give you peace of mind and will make your heart glad. When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. Words alone will not discipline a servant. The words may be understood, but they are not he heeded. There is more hope for a fool than for someone who speaks without thinking. A servant pampered from childhood will become a rebel. An angry person starts fight. A hot-tempered person commits all kinds of sins. Pride ends in humiliation, while humility brings honor. If you assist a thief, 
you only hurt yourself. You are sworn to tell the truth, but you dare not testify. Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trust in the Lord means safety. Many seek the ruler's favor, but justice comes from the Lord. The righteous despise the, the unjust. The wicked despises the godly. And that's certainly true today, uh, this last verse. The righteous despise the unjust. The wicked despises the godly. Um, in today's um, environment, good is being spoken evil of. And evil is being spoken good of. It's like the world just went, just flipped upside down. And everything that was good is bad, and everything that is bad is good. At least those that are chirping the loudest are saying that. And so if you are a person and you don't know the ways of God, you would fall right into this. Because they clothe it in the um, skin of, you know, inclusivity, loving people, um, not being hateful. You know, they clothe when you're good and you stand on godly principle. They clothe that in that you are being hateful and you are hating people that have a certain stance in their life or have chosen to go down a certain path that you don't agree with. They clothe it in hate. And if you are not learned, if you don't know what the word of God says, you would just go right down the road with that. But that is not true. And this is why we need to stay in the word of God, because it's very clear as to what is wrong and what is right. And also the spirit of God will let us know what is wrong and what is right. So uh, if you are one out there and you don't have the spirit of God leading you and guiding you and showing you what is wrong and what is right, I can help you get the spirit of God today. And it's only me uh, just leading you there. God has already did everything for you. He's just waiting for you to come into the knowledge and to accept it. So in order to do that, all you need to do is pray this simple, simple prayer after me. If you want the spirit of God, if you want to accept Christ in your life, just pray this prayer. Father, I know I'm a sinner. And I try to do right, but I just can't on my own. But I know that you sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for me. To cleanse me of all my sins. So that when you look at me, Lord, you look at me as pure. Even though I still sometimes do wrong. You look at me through the lens of Jesus and what Jesus has done for me. Because he paid my sin debt in full. And so now I accept him today. I accept what he done on the cross for me. I accept him into my heart. Please lead me and guide me for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, you are now a child of God. You are a sibling of Jesus Christ. You are on your way to heaven. Now, what we need to do going forward is read your Bible daily, if possible. If not, carve out some time throughout the week where you devote reading your Bible. And also you need to pray daily. And prayer is something that you should never cease as doing cease at doing. You can pray at all times while you're driving down the street, uh, while you're doing your exercise, you know, um you while you're taking your shower. You can pray anytime. You don't have to use no tools to pray. It's just you and God, a conversation between you and God. You thanking him, praising him, asking him for direction and guidance. 
No problem is too big and too, or too small for the Lord. I even ask him sometimes, Lord, where did I put my keys? And he will lead me to where I put place my keys. So there's nothing too small for you to come to God and ask for or too large. Now, we may not always get what we ask for, but uh, I like to pray that God give me the de desires of my heart. And that's actually in scriptures so that I would desire what he wants me to have. So when I pray, I pray for what God wants me to have. I like to do it that way. But if you made that decision today, uh, please, please, please let me know. Put it in the comments below. The angels in heaven are rejoicing and I too want to rejoice for you. So let me know if you have any questions. Let me know. I may not have the answer, but I will definitely try to find an answer. But first and foremost, go to God and ask him. And, and sometimes he'll lead you to a particular person or a book or even a song or something that will give you the answer that you're searching for. So make sure you always include God in everything and he will direct your path. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Thank you guys for listening and watching and you all have a blessed day. Bye.